I think it will be no secret to, to recognise that um, we're in a tricky time at the moment. Um, if, you, if you had the news on in your car as you came here this evening, there will have been calamity being described on every front in all sorts of ways. And it was perhaps that that set me off looking at Habakkuk these last three weeks because he um, speaks into a difficult time and he has questions for tough times. His questions are for God in the first two chapters. And I'm recognizing that most of you haven't heard parts one and two. So for those who have, I'm sorry, there's going to be about a kind of three-minute recap. and We'll see how quick we can make this recap as we go through um, uh, Habakkuk. He, he was um, around about uh, um, 600 BC, just before the Babylonians swept down through the southern kingdom of Israel. So here's the quick recap. Habakkuk 1 has uh, Habakkuk's complaint. Lord, your people have been terrible. How long, Lord, will you let them carry on? And we spoke about trusting enough to lament. And then um, uh, God's reply comes and it totally baffles um, uh, Habakkuk. It's like he, he begins to feel it's okay. Um, I will bring my judgment on my people for their disobedience, says God. And you can almost feel Habakkuk beginning to do a high five. And then... God says, and I'm going to do that by having the Babylonians sweep through and destroy them. So trusting God in uncertain times turns for um, Habakkuk from that to saying, no, Lord, they're even worse than your people. So he has to learn to trust God when you don't understand God and his ways. That's Habakkuk 1. Habakkuk 2. So um, we find... Habakkuk speaking and saying, uh, I will stand my guard and station myself on the ramparts. And I mentioned that would be a scene people in this town would know from the days when there would have been a watch guard on the castle all the time. It's the patient messenger waiting to warn. And, and God speaks to him and says, I've got a very practical thing for you to do. And there's a message. Um, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads, reads it, may run. And I got myself slightly knotted up because actually that phrase, that phrase can be um, uh, translated either that way or so that he who runs may read it. In other words, it's either a message that can be carried or a billboard, which makes it a plain message. And the plain message is one that the New Testament is largely built on, particularly Paul's letters, Paul is very fond um, of Habakkuk 2.4 as his key life verse. The righteous shall live by faith. Those in a right relationship do so by faith. And then Habakkuk points out that's not about what we do or what we can achieve, but about focusing on what I described as the permanent magnificence of God. When the knowledge of the Lord uh, will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. Oh, there we are. That's Habakkuk 1 and 2. And some of you sat through my much longer talks on Habakkuk 1 and 2 are wondering why I couldn't have just said it that way. 